Welcome! In this tutorial I talk about the new OpenBDB features in Maxon Cinema 4D Release 20. This product shot by Matthew O'Neill is a great example of how OpenBDB can be used to greatly speed up your modeling workflow. Matthew has been using and teaching Cinema 4D professionally since 1999. He co-founded 3D Fluff in 2003 and set about producing a series of training D4Ds focusing on real-world problems. If you want to know more about Matthew and his work, visit his website 3dfluff.com. Before we dive now into this tutorial, I want to make a brief introduction of myself. My name is Helge Maus and I'm a Maxon Certified Lead Instructor. I work now since 18 years in the industry as a 3D and VFX trainer for my company Pixeltrain. You'll find more information about me and my trainings on pixeltrain.de. So let's get started to look into volumes inside of Cinema 4D at 20. Volumes are a really powerful technology. You can use volumes for different kind of work. Volumes are really popular, for example, if you want to simulate fire, explosions, dust and fog. But on the other side, you also can use volumes for modeling purposes. And that's exactly the topic I want to talk mostly in this tutorial because Cinema 4D is not capable in the moment to render out volumes as volumetric effects, but you can mesh everything which is a volume. And so the first thing we will do in R20 is we use volumes for modeling. But to better understand now what a volume is, I want to start with an empty scene first. And we want to build our first volume now. So first we add some kind of primitive, for example, a torus here. And in the next step, we need a volume generator. And for this, we have a whole new menu here inside of Cinema 4D at 20. And here is the volume builder. You also find the volume builder in this menu here. And there are two ways of adding now this geometry to the volume builder. The first way is really easy to understand because every generator works like this. You add this torus as a child object to the volume builder and instantly you get a volume as a result. But there's another way and sometimes a really useful way. Instead of making a parent-child relationship, you can select here your volume builder and you see there's a list field here. And you can add your torus or your objects here into the list field by drag and drop. But in this case, we don't get the parent-child relationship and the torus here is still visible. So you get two overlapping objects in your viewport and you normally have then to hide this torus. The big advantage of this approach is that you can use the same geometry in different volume builders, for example, or you have the need of other setups. These two approaches are possible. In my case, I want to drag it under the volume builder so we only see the volume. You see the viewport presentation looks a little bit strange now. You still can see the torus, but it looks a little bit strange. And the reason for this is this is a volume. And if you now try to render this, you will see absolutely nothing. Cinema 4D R20 isn't able to render volumes in the moment. We have to mesh them later so that we have a mesh which we can render. Keep this in mind for your work. We can import, we can export volumes. We can work with them, but for rendering here inside of Cinema 3D, we need to mesh them out. And meshing of volumes is done by another generator, which is found here under volumes with the volume measure. So if you add now your volume builder result into the volume measure, you will see that then this volume measure is building a mesh here. So if you go here to display and say, show me the lines, you will see you get a nice mesh here with quads and if you now press render, you see your volume is now meshed and rendered here in the viewport. To understand now the work with the volume, we have to look a little bit into the technical backgrounds of the volume. The volume technology which is implemented in Cinema 4D is a well-known technology. It's named OpenVDB and OpenVDB is hosted by DreamWorks and you can find more information about OpenVDB on this website, openvdb.org. 
you will see that it's a well industry known technology which is implemented in different kind of renderers and 3D applications. So Maxon has done a really good job in implementing exactly this feature film proven technology into Cinema 4D R20. If you now want to understand these options here which you have inside the volume builder, you have to understand what for example a voxel is. And for this I prepared you an image here inside of my picture viewer and we can make here a full screen of this. This image is taken from the documentation of Cinema 4D R20. The first term you have to understand is voxel. You see a voxel is like a little cube and you can understand a voxel like a three dimensional pixel for example. So an object is represented by these voxels. You don't have gaps here. Every voxel has exactly the same size and you can decide how big a voxel is. You can change the voxel density through the voxel size and if you have more voxels you get a better representation of your original object to the cost that you need more memory to store this. At this point it's also important to understand that every voxel can store exactly one value and sometimes you want to store more values in the same space here and for this inside of these volumes you get then a stack of different kind of so named voxel grids over each other. So every voxel can store one value but you can overlap the same voxel with other voxels and you store in every of these overlapping voxel exactly one value. So there are also two kind of volume types. One volume type is named a FOC volume. In a FOC volume you get a really volumetric approach. So this here is filled by voxel completely. And this technique is normally used for example in simulations. If you want to simulate for example explosions, fire, smoke, fog and so on you store here for example the density of the smoke or the temperature of this space here. For this a fog volume is really really good. But if you now want to model with this approach which we will do in this tutorial there's another way of storing volumetric data and this is named an STF or assigned distant field. This is represented here on the right side. You will see that this sphere here is hollow in the middle because here was the original surface and then we have an exterior voxel area and an interior voxel area. So it fades out here. Every of these voxels store not the surface because the surface was infinite thin. They store the distance to the surface and if you are on one side or the other side you need a sign for example a plus or minus to store the distance here to this original shell and that's the reason why it's named signed distant field. This signed distant field has a big advantage because you can for example really easy erode or delay the surface. You will see this in a moment. That's the background we have to understand before we now use our volume tools here. So back here in the original scene I deactivate for now the volume measure because I first want to talk with you about the volume builder generator. If you select this you see here first the volume types which I've talked about the sign distant field and also the fog volume. The fog volume is completely filled like I've explained to you before so for this we only have here the voxel size as an option. If you open up here this little triangle on the left side of the voxel size you see everything else is grayed out and if you have a signed distant field like I've explained you have an interior and an exterior voxel range you can change them here directly. The volume builder inside of Cinema 4D R20 is also capable of voluminize for example splines. So if you add here a spline and you also drag this into the volume builder here you will see that you get here a voxel representation of this. I decrease here a little bit the voxel size so that it looks a little bit nicer and then you can for example tell the system what the spline voxel range is and also for particles because they don't have a 
representation in space normally. So you can add this here if you need this. Now we also see that we have here a mini attributes manager. What's the reason behind this? If you select here, for example, the torus, you can tell the system, for example, that you don't want to use the volumetric appearance of the torus itself. You only want to use, for example, the mesh points. And this is an option for this layer here. So these options here depend which kind of layer you select. If you select now the spline here, you will see that you have a radius, which you can change here. And if the radius is too small, you sometimes see here little spheres or jumps in this representation. And for this, you can increase the density of this spline here to get a better representation here. If you have, for example, a primitive like a uh, sphere, and you add this here, you will see that here, for example, there's a special option for getting here a perfect primitive. Otherwise, you see the facets here of the original object because normally these objects are made smooth by a font tag and the original facets are the representation of the volume here for the sphere. For example, you have here a perfect primitive so you can really have a better representation, for example, of spheres. Okay, so that's here. Then you have here the auto update setting, you will see in bigger scenes that it takes some time to calculate these volumes and you can deactivate this and update then by clicking on this update button. To understand what voxel amount you have with the setting of the voxel size, you can take a look here and you also see your memory consumption with this volume. Now we have two objects here together in this volume builder. And like I've explained, it's working like a bool operation. So both objects are now merged together. And if you mesh this out later, you will see that you get a mesh, which is really here completely going over these two objects. So it's a better bool operation, if you will, at this point. And it's much easier to work with because you get later a nice topology here through the volume measure and you don't have to think about all the problems you normally have with bool operations. So it's a really nice prototyping tool if you only want to throw some ideas into the viewport to building, for example, an object or a silhouette or whatever. Let's go back here into these so named layers. You also can change now the layer modes. For this, we have here three options. You can union these two volumes, you can subtract them, so you get holes inside of this here. And now you see that the voxel size is really important if you have such a small object here. So let's increase this here. Now you have a hole in this torus. And you can also make an intersection if you need this for your modeling purpose. So it's really, really clever to prototype forms. You can now throw as many objects as you like here into the system. For example, I take a cube. If you now need two cubes on two sides, you can also take a symmetry object. So it's another generator. Take the symmetry, make here, for example, two cubes. Okay. And then you also can add this generator in this list. You see, it works really, really easy. That's a really nice thing if you want to use all the features of Cinema 4D at this point. If you now want to change here this hierarchy, you can drag and drop, or you can use here these folder icons. This is really useful if you want to bring stuff together and every of these folders have its own mode then, so you can have a really complex hierarchy at this point. If you want to get rid of something like that, select it and use the delete key here on your keyboard get rid of this and we can use now for example a subtract to make something like that. Then we have two other kind of layers. One is a reshape layer and one is a smooth layer. Let's take a reshape layer and for this I deactivate here these two objects. I don't want to see these two objects in this moment. 
and I then take a reshape layer. A reshape layer can delay or erode. The direction is set by this offset. So if you, for example, take a positive offset, you will delay. The object is getting bigger. You can check this by this little tick here. You see it's getting bigger. Or you can erode with a negative value so the object shrinks together. So really useful sometimes to work with these options here. I delete this for a moment. And the other one is the smooth layer. If you say, okay, the torus is nice, but it looks too faceted, you can add a smooth layer here. And inside of the smooth layer, you have different kind of filters. They work accordingly to the Photoshop filters. So if you have a Gaussian filter, for example, normally a Gaussian filter inside of Photoshop goes over amount of pixels in the neighborhood. Here, instead of pixels, voxels are used. And keep in mind that you always can add whole voxels. You can't have a fraction of a voxel because it doesn't make sense. But if you like, you can have more than one iteration if you need this. So you can now make a Gaussian here over the whole structure. If I now add the other two objects and now you want to make this here also smooth, this connection point here, you need these two objects together so you can make another smooth layer. But then you will see you maybe want to have it only in one connection. And for this, you can use here, like I've said, these folders here. So if you take, for example, these two objects and place them there, then this here is only smoothing this circle and not the whole stack underneath it. Really, really useful use of these folders here. If you have then finished now your work here, you can then mash this all together and then you can render this interesting shape. So this is the use here of this volume builder stack. Now we want to take a look into the scenes which you will find in your content browser. Let's press the V key on your keyboard. I've opened two scenes here. One is from Matthew. You will see here this muffin box. And Matthew has used this technique now, not only for the muffins, but also for this really complex package here. To model this by hand, it would be a nightmare. But with the help of this new volume technology, it's really, really easy. If we deactivate here the muffins for a moment and we open up this hierarchy here, you will see there is the label. I can deactivate this for you also. You will see that this volume builder here only has three entries. One is this null object, so this is the positive. And then we have a subtract which removes the top part here of the whole case. And then he smooths this out here with a smooth filter. This smooth filter here is set to a mean filter type so that he gets a better representation here of the edges. If you want to understand now how this here works, you can take here this null object and copy it to your clipboard and paste it into a new file. Now you see that the whole thing is a really, really easy case here. You see you have these objects here in the list, which are cones then you have here a cloner or he had a cloner where he has cloned capsules around this object then he throws it into a symmetry to get two of them all this stuff then is booled together by this volume and with the help of the volume you get a complete surface and this surface then is mashed out and to give it a little bit of thickness instead of a, a big chunk, he used here the cloth surface generator from Cinema 4D's cloth simulation to give it a little bit of a negative thickness so he can get here this thickness. You see a really clever approach. I also want to show you another interesting approach here from Yang Ge this time. It's a bottle. Modeling a package like this here is also really hard. 
we can do the same thing here to understand how this extreme complex bottle you see here these grips you see here these indents and so on is modeled by really simple primitives inside of Cinema 4D. Let's try to prototype something. I want to do, for example, a watering can and I don't have the exact idea what I want to do. I want really to play with shapes and volumes. For this, I start here with primitives inside of Cinema 4D. We have a whole bunch of them, for example, with the oil tank here as the main body. The oil tank has the big advantage for me that I can change here this cap height and also here the height from the top so I can play with these two until I find something which I like and I want to have Z as an orientation, something like that here for example. And then we need here the opening for the water so let's switch here over to the front view and take here a pen and we draw here really fast a spline inside of the viewport press the escape key to go out and to have it a little bit nicer curved I select the spline and switch to Akima and then we can shape this because we want to go the volume approach I stick the stuff into each other so I don't have to think that I exactly start somewhere. This is something which the volume does for me later. Let's now add a circle here. Bring it down to 40. And then we can sweep these two to make something <laughs> like that. I have to confess it's a little bit big for my taste. So I go here to the sweep. There's a nice option inside of the sweep. It's here under details that I have here the scale curvature and the rotation. And so I want to scale it down here at the end. And it uses the maximal radius. And this is done here by the circle. And that's the reason why I want to use this big radius here so that I have a little bit more to work with. Something like that, for example looks nice maybe a little bit thick here so increase this here to 50 yeah something like that and if you now want for example to change something here it's as easy as taking this here and stick it into that let's take first a look how this here looks as a volume so this main and then we go here to the volumes. I need a volume builder and I drag these two objects underneath that. I want to use a sign distant field. I want to decrease here the voxel size. We don't have to decrease it too much at the first step because yeah we are still prototyping and we are playing and so for me it's more interesting that the whole thing is fast. It's first about the shape. The next thing is we need here a handle somehow. So switch again here to the view here. If you like, you can also deactivate here the volume builder. And we take our friend the pen tool again. I want to have something going over this here. And come in here. Can try a chema again but I think it's a little bit harsh here to shop but we can play with this so if you like we can add some more points to have a little bit more control about this shape here and also we can take here the segments yeah maybe something like that I can Copy this circle for a moment. Make another sweep. And now we have to place the points a little bit better. I think this circle is too big. Something like that. 
Yeah, and so we get into this shape. You can press the Q key on your keyboard to deactivate here the generator, which is the parent of the selected object. So it's a little bit easier to work like this and to think about what's going on here. You can deactivate Z so you don't accidentally move the spline in Z and press Q again. Maybe something like that. And we can now start scaling this here again like we've done before. And increase a little bit the size so that we have a little bit more to work with. A little bit more flesh here. And then we can play again here and the front. This is the back, so maybe make another point here. This here can be big. And then we go down really fast. Maybe something like that here. If you want to change the interpolation, you can zero out the tangent. And that's it. Yeah, let's try this also inside of our volume builder. That's the next step. Okay. And then we need an opening here for the water. And I think <laughs> if I look here, it's really too thick. Maybe 16. Okay, so to make the opening, I take a cylinder here. And place it where I like it, something like that. Now, normally the question arises, do I have to make it completely hollow? No, we only want to make here a little hole here because the rest here we will change in a moment completely. So this is the opening. Add it also to your volume builder and now we can subtract this. So it looks like that here. You see how easy it is to prototype something. Everything is still procedurally built so we can change all the stuff here if we like all the time. That's really nice. And then we can now go into this system here and start with, for example, smoothing. What I don't like is the whole appearance of this. So I take a smooth layer here and I want to preserve the mean curvature, for example. For some filters, we also have filter accuracies. So you can change here these. But in my case, I want to decrease now a little bit here first the voxel size so that we really can see what's going on. And if we now take Gaussian, I like this look much more. You also can bring it first here to the main shape to tell the system, okay, this year I want to have over three voxels, for example, smoothed. It's really, really flat here. Then we had this another object here. You can connect these better if you add the smooth layer over this. Then you see they connect now because of the smoothing here. And we can increase the voxel size here a little bit more to have this much more smoothed here. We can also try this here for the handle. It works in my case. Otherwise, add another smooth layer. That's, like I've said, the big advantage of this technique. And if you now see, you have to increase here a little bit. This here, you can do it here still. It's full procedurally at this point, still. The opening, you can try this again. And you see, okay, for the opening, it's a little bit harsh, but if we decrease down here, the radius of the opening a little bit, yeah, it works. That was my first idea. Now I want to have a little bit of deco here on this side. I want to have such rings here. How to do that? For this, I deactivate my volume builder and I take the main body and drag it up. Then we can go here to the solo mode for a moment and activate here with NB the lines. You see, we have here the lines on the cap and 
these have a nice pattern which I want to use. For this, I select here the main body and convert it to polygon object. Then we go here to the edge mode, take here our move tool. And if you now make a double click on an edge loop, Cinema 3D selects for you here the edge loops. You see that we also get this nice curvature of the edge loops. Take this one here. And instead of edge loops, I want to have splines. For this, Cinema 3D has under the mesh menu a command or a conversion. I think it's a command, edge to spline. And we get then as children of our main shape here, splines. The main here can be thrown away. And now you see I have splines which sits exactly here on the top of this body here. And now I can use these splines. The volume builder is able to work also with splines and particles so we can bring him back. Don't forget to bring this solo out. And now you see mm, it's interesting but not exactly what I'm after. I take now this spline here. I have to select it again so that I really only see here the splines. I bring them down here mm, five, four centimeters. And now we can increase here the density of the spline so that we get these nice rings here. Now we see we need these rings on both sides of the whole system. For this, we can take the splines here and drag them out for a moment so that you see what's happening. I take here a symmetry object, place the splines here and change here the direction to x, y, so I get these splines on both sides. And now we can bring this deco back here into the volume builder. Now we have it on both sides. We lose in this moment the settings here for the spline. So we have to select the deco here again and it was four centimeters and I think we were at point six or seven. Yeah, that's it. You see how fast we can work with this. And yeah, it's really easy to change something later. And then we can, for example, subtract now this here on both sides. And we want to have it smoothed. So bring it to the top. And you see it's too strong here for the whole effect. So I bring it back here. If we like, we can now take, for example, here a folder, bring the deco into this, and use a smooth layer only inside of this folder here. And with this uh, smooth now, we can now make them here a little bit softer, and we get something like that here. I think that's it to this point. Now, the last thing we have to do is we need this part here hollow and also later this part. So how to do that? The nice thing is we have the shape which we want to use and this is the main shape here. What we can do now is I take this main shape here and generate an instance out of that. And so we get the same object again and we have now to shrink it down. Remember you can't scale an instance like this here. The reason for this is that this tool here, the modeling mode normally works on the polygon points which are not there because it's an instance. But what you can do is you can go here to the object mode and then you can now scale this in a little bit depending on the thickness you are after later. This is the idea here, say something like that here and name this, for example, inner. And then we can place it somewhere in the hierarchy. We start first here and inner has to be subtracted. And now we see it's hollow. Same you can do here. 
yeah and that was the modeling part the next part is now we have to mesh this out so that we can render this for this we go here to the volumes and see we want to have a volume mesher we place this under the mesher and get rid here of all the polygons in the viewport and that's it we now prototyped our first object here it's a thing of minutes sometimes to get an idea to work around here with splines with generators you have seen with also MoGraph cloners and so that's the real power behind this volume builder approach that you can change nearly everything every time in your process this volume builder also works with things like for example field layers so you can add a field and add it here into this hierarchy and many things more i hope it helped you to get the first start my name is helga maus from pixel train have fun with this